Hey folks, uh, this uh, lesson is a fun lesson, experimental probability of compound events. That means two events happening uh, at the same time. So there's our, our common core strand for our most grooviest uh, math teachers. And be nice to your groovy math teachers. And then, so how do we find the experimental prob probability of a compound event? Sorry about that. So a compound event is an event that includes two or more simple events. So, for example, uh, flipping a coin and rolling a numbered cube. So uh, we're going to do that first. So compound events can include uh, events that are dependent on each other uh, or independent of each other. So we're going to be working with independent events in this lesson. And in most lessons, we'll talk about that in just a second. So events that are independent, uh, if the occurrence of one event does not affect the probability of the other event, such as flipping a coin and rolling a number Q. Okay, so we'll talk about this later, but not in this lesson. But depending events, or say, let's say, let's say you had a deck of cards and and a uh, deck has 52 cards in it. And let's say you want to know what's the probability of pulling, say, two hearts out. Okay, remember one fourth of the deck are hearts, so there's um, uh, 13 out of 52 cards, and and dependent would be are you going to leave that card out because the second card that you pull would be dependent on the first card, or are you going to put it back in and shuffle it again, and then it would be that would be independent. So so uh, we're going to be working with independent events on on this lesson. Okay, so so dependent means it totally depends on the first event. What happens with the second event? So, um, uh, so that we're gonna um, do independent events on this one. So, so what are the possible outcomes of flipping a coin? Well, we, when you flip a coin, you get a heads or a tails. Okay. How about the possible outcomes for a standard cube? Uh, if you roll it once, you can get one, two, three, four, five, or six on that. Okay. So, let's go ahead and answer these. Let me slide that up. Sorry, I, I went real fast. So. We're going to complete the list of all possible outcomes for flipping a coin and rolling a number cube. Okay, let me just slide that up. Okay, so we can get a, this stands for a heads uh, on a flip and a one, a heads on a flip and a two on the, on the cube. So this one's going to be a heads and a three and so on. So this is, so heads and a three, a heads and a four, heads and a five, a heads and a six. Those are all the six outcomes we can do if we got a heads uh, rolling the coin. And then so if we roll the coin and get a tails, we can get a tails and a one, a tails and a two, three, four, five, or six. So how many outcomes are there? There's going to be 12 outcomes. And um, we'll learn again later how, how many outcomes, as long as they're independent of each other. This has two outcomes. This has six outcomes. Two times six equals these 12 different outcomes. Okay, that's later, but I'm just kind of letting you know ahead. So let's flip a coin and roll a number uh, 50, uh, roll number cubed 50 times and use tally marks to record our results. Okay, so let me go get my um, uh, my flipping or rolling a cube. I don't have a uh, I don't have a uh, uh, a dice on here, so let me do this to one cube, okay, so here's one cube, and we're going to roll, okay, so we get a one, and I'm going to flip a, can you hear my quarter, it flips to a head, so I get a, a heads and a one, so what I'm going to do is is um, uh, put a, a heads and a one uh, right here, it says use tally marks, okay, so here's a, a heads and a one right there, okay, so that's my first time, so let's do it again, we're going to do this 50 times, I'll only do it three, Okay, so that's a six. So let me roll my coin again. Okay, sorry, that's a heads and again. So a heads and a six. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and do a heads and a six. So there's my second of 50. Okay, I'm going to do one more. And then I've already done this earlier. So, so here we go. That time it's a five. So this time it's a... Oh, we get a tails finally and a five. So I'm going to put a tails and a five right here. Now to save time you guys, I've already done this 50 times so let me go ahead and flash forward right here. So here we go. Okay so there they are right there. So based on this experiment, so there's there's 50 of them. There's 50 tick marks. Now as long as you guys know that, um, uh, let me 
Let me get this over here. As long as you guys know that there's 50 of them right here, I got 50 tick marks. And and um, uh, if you're in my class, this would represent five. So here's four, and here's the fifth one. And the reason why you do that is it, it's easy to count by five. So here's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Okay, here's thirty-four, thirty-five. Plus four more is 39, 43, 44, 45, plus four more, there, five more is, is um, uh, I don't know, they should be out to 50. I don't think I got 50 there somewhere. I was adding wrong. Anyway, so based on the experiment, which compound event had the greatest experimental probability and what was it? So which one has the most? Okay, it looks like this one has the most. Okay, how about the least right here? Well, definitely this one had the least. So a heads and a one, and then a tails and a five are my, my greatest and my least right there, okay? So did you expect to have the same probability for each possible outcome of flipping those coins? Why or why not? Okay, well, no, obviously, this one has six, this one has two, and five, and four, and four, and so on. They're not even right there because um, we only did it 50 times. Now, the more times you do it, if everybody in the class could do that 50 times, and then you combine everybody's results, uh, they become more and more even. You'd see it's it's kind of a really cool possibility. So, so um, uh, it's called the law of large numbers. The more um, uh, that you guys do that, so if the whole class could do it 50 times individually, flip a coin and roll a dice you find that they become more and more even. Would they be exactly even? No, but they become a lot more even. Anyways, so the experimental probability of a compound event can be found using your recorded data. So here's an example. A food trailer serves chicken and records the order size and sides of their orders as shown in the table. So what's the experimental probability uh, that the next order is uh, three piece with coleslaw. Okay, so three piece with coleslaw would be here's three piece, here's coleslaw, there's 50, but first we've got to figure out how many there are total. Let me just slide that up. So let's add up all of those numbers right there and they add up to 330. Okay, so the experimental probability is we need to find out how many had three pieces in coleslaw of that 330. So it's going to be uh, 55, so 55 out of 330, and then it's called the reduction game. Okay, so I can see definitely 5 goes into this 11 times, and 5 goes into this um, 66 times. So if we reduce that, 11 over 66, and then uh, it's called the reduction game. So 11 goes into this once, into this 6 times, so we get 1 sixth, okay? So... Uh, the experimental probability that the next order for three pieces of chicken with coleslaw is one six. Is it exactly one six? No, but it's a it, it's a good um, educated um, uh, not guess but educated assumption that it would be one six given the data that was given to us. Okay, so Julie says uh, that the total number of orders is eight, not three hundred and thirty. Is she correct? And explain well. Um, no, see, Julie, there's eight um, uh, possible choices right here, but um, of those eight possible choices, there's uh, 330 um, orders right there. So uh, there's eight possible number of outcomes, but the total number of orders ended up being 330, okay? Well, let's try another. Drink sales for an afternoon at a school carnival were recorded in this table. What's the probability that the next... Uh, drink is a small coca, uh, small coca, okay, or coca or cocoa or whatever. So here's a, here's a, the small, and then here's the coca right here, okay, or cocoa or whatever. Okay, so first we've got to find the total. So we're going to add up all those numbers and adds up to 400 right there. So it's going to be 60 out of 400. Now I don't know if you guys know this rule, but um, uh, when you have, when you have uh, things that end in zeros and a fraction, you can cancel those. So we're left with 6 over 40, and that's that's easier to reduce than uh, 60 over 40 right there. So I'm going to reduce that to 6 over 40 right there. And then 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 goes into 40 20 times. Now I don't care if you want to change that to a, a decimal, so let's go ahead and change that to a decimal. So that's the probability, 3 20ths. Now old school. SAT test, they liked uh, fraction answers, but now they're starting to convert that to a decimal. So 3 divided by 20 
gets me uh, 0.15 or 0 0.15. So that's going to be 0.15 or even 15% when we move that decimal over two places. Okay, remember decimals, you remove it over one, two places, and it becomes 15% right there. Okay. All right, so uh, we can use a simulation or a model of an experiment to find the experimental probability of compound events. So, for example, at a street intersection, uh, a vehicle is classified as either a car or a truck. Okay, so there's two possibilities right there. And they can turn left, right, or go straight. So there's three possibilities more. So it's either a car going left, right, or straight, or, or a truck going left, right, or straight. So remember, if you multiply those possibilities, 2 times 3 equals 6, there's going to be a total of 6 different outcomes. So about an equal number of cars and trucks go through that intersection and turn in each direction. So use a simulation to find the experimental probability that the next vehicle will be a car that turns right. Okay, so first we have to pick a model for the simulation. Okay, so since it's a car or a truck, Here's the first one, a car or a truck, there's two possibilities. So we can, what we can do is flip a coin, heads or tails. And this one, uh, turning left, right, or going straight, what, what could we do here? Well, if we have a spinner that has three equal places, we could do that. So, so we can use a coin for the car or truck and letting heads be the car and tails be in the truck. And then for the three directions, we can use a spinner. And then if you can just kind of flick it with your finger, um, we can uh, see where it lands, make sure that it's not uh, uh, straight up and down, but it's sitting flat on your, on your desk right there. And uh, we, can, we can do that. So there's six possible outcomes. So this represents a car going left, a car going right, a car going straight. This is a truck going left, a truck going right, a truck going straight. So there's six different outcomes. Okay, let's just slide that up. Okay, so um, a coin was tossed and a spinner was spun, and so 50 times. Okay, and again, I'm just saving time because otherwise it would be very boring for you me to flip a coin 50 times and then at the same time spin a spinner okay so so um, as long as they're equally likely okay and so so this is um, uh, the cars and the trucks so this would have been a heads and a tails right here and then this would have been um, uh, landing right here this right would have been landing right here and going straight would have been landing right here so so first we got to do is add all these up, okay? So when we add those up, uh, they said we're going to do it 50 times right there. So we're looking for um, uh, we're looking for a vehicle of, of a car that turns right. So here's a car that turns right is six. So we said we did it 50 times, so it's six out of 50. Okay, two goes into that three times, two goes into that 25 times, so we get that. Now, if we wanted to get a decimal, we could just pick up our handy-dandy calculator. All right, now, as you get uh, higher in math classes, you guys, your teachers are going to want you to reduce those fractions, so, so uh, please don't give up on that, because I know you guys want to pick up a calculator, and I tell my students all the time, as soon as you turn that calculator on, you uh, turn your brain off, so I'm going to do... 3 divided by 25, and that gets me 0.12, which is 12%, okay? Now, it's the same as 6 divided by 50, but if you were in my class, I'd sure like you to be able to still reduce fractions from, um, uh, from your uh, earlier grades right there. Anyway, so we get uh, 0.12, or 12% 12 right there, okay? All right, so predict the number of cars that will... Turn. Well, I don't know what happened right there. What well, will turn right? Let's see what happened right there. Oh, we got an extra U in here. Let's take that out. Uh, that will turn right out of a hundred vehicles that enter the intersection. Okay. Well, those guys that are going to turn right, uh, since uh, the data shows that six out of fifty vehicles are going to be cars that turn right. Well, if we want to know out of 100, we just double that. So 50 times 2 is 100, so, so 6 times 2 is going to be 12. So we're going to get 12 out of 100. Would it be 12? Probably not, but that would be a good um, uh, educated uh, guesstimation on that. All right, let's try one more. Okay, a jeweler sells necklaces made in three sizes and two different metals. Okay, so we have three sizes right here. So here's our sizes, 12 inches, 16 inches, and 20 inches. And the, the metals are silver and gold. Okay, so we're going to use this data to uh, 
to uh, uh, from a simulation to find the experimental probability that the next less, uh, necklace sold is going to be a 20 inch necklace uh, that is gold so that's going to be 12 okay first we've got to add up all these and put 12 on top okay so this is our bottom number 75 okay so it's going to be 12 out of 75 okay now um, uh, the divisibility rule is if we add these digits 1 plus 2 is 3 since 3 goes into 3 7 plus 5 is 12 since 3 goes into 12 then 3 goes into both of these 3 goes into this um, 4 times uh, 3 quarters gets me 75 so this reduces to 4 over what did I say so yeah it's 4 over 25 right there and then um, you can change that to a decimal and all that stuff if you want but that I am good if you can get to 425 on that all right you guys I hope that makes sense and take care